This audio production was made in collaboration with Audible Anarchist. A Glowing Dream Considerations on Green Syndicalism and Radical Ecology by Jolly Roger Published in the zine Third Nature by Live Oak Press Issue 2 February 2021 we have a glowing dream of how fair the world will seem. Green syndicalism, the intersection of radical ecology and radical industrial unionism, has had a profound impact through the praxis carried out by its adherents, though it has nonetheless received but little recognition, even among other radical leftist ecologists. This is likely due to the relative obscurity of syndicalism following the end of the 20th century and the growth of new forms of radical ecology such as communalism, which almost entirely ignore the role of labor organizing in matters of ecology. However, while modern industry under capitalism is alienating and destructive to both the workers and the earth, green syndicalism reconciles labor organizing with radical ecology to create avenues for achieving revolutionary goals in the here and now both towards the preservation of the earth and the liberation of its people. To begin, it would be appropriate to lay out what syndicalism entails in its ideology and praxis before moving on to demonstrate how it has and can continue to be an effective means of ecological action and liberation of people from the conditions of capitalism. Syndicalism, in its most basic form, is the organization of the working class via radical industrial unionism with the aim of eventually opening the window for a revolutionary turn towards worker control and ownership of the means of production, while building dual power in the meantime. These unions are not restricted merely to single trades or workplaces, but instead encompass all members of society who engage in the struggle for workers' liberation. But in contrast to a vanguard party, or some other form of so-called unified front, these unions are based on organic cooperation and organization by their members, and are tooled to respond immediately to the material conditions of their own specific context. While this is of course an extremely reductive explanation, it delineates the main concept of radical unionism and localized autonomy, which defines syndicalism as an ideology and mode of praxis. Thus, while syndicalism has had its history rooted in historic heavy industry, it is also immediately applicable not only to agriculture and ecology, but to all of society. It is this focus on radical, immediate change which establishes the point of unity between syndicalism and ecology. Both understand merely reforming and restraining capitalism to be a half-measure, both for the health of our planet and the liberation of its people. Instead, both call for revolutionary action to force change within the lifetimes of revolutionaries, if only to ensure that there will be a habitable earth for future generations to live in. To this end, radical ecology and syndicalism call for the abolition of capital in its entirety, recognizing that no true liberation can occur until capitalism is supplanted by a just economic system which works for everybody. However, syndicalist theory has often failed to go far enough in its understanding of ecological stewardship in favor of focusing solely on the worker struggle and their relationship to their labor. While this can be somewhat attributed to the historical context of early syndicalism, it is still a major oversight that has become increasingly dubious as climate change and ecological disasters continue to accelerate at unprecedented rates in the 21st century. Likewise, most theory surrounding radical ecology has either underplayed or disregarded entirely the role of labor within ecological context, save for observing it as another negative relation due to capitalism, with no acknowledgement that radical industrial unionism can not only be a viable way of achieving ecological and societal revolutionary goals in the present, but has already demonstrated its ability to do so in the past. While there are multiple instances of syndicalist organizing towards radical ecological ends, here we will examine the green bands of Australia in the 1970s and the organizing work of Judy Berry in Northern California in the 1980s. The Green Bands were a series of strike actions by Australian union workers which were most prominent in the 1970s, the majority of which were motivated by environmental concerns. The Green Bands coincided with the restructuring of the Builder Laborers Federation, BLF, Construction Workers Trade Union, 
wherein union workers removed their old, corrupt union bosses and implemented radically democratic and egalitarian policies which ensured the BLF was a union of, by, and for the workers. While never explicitly syndicalist, the ways in which the workers of the BLF seized and reconstructed their union, and then proceeded to demonstrate their power free of the interference of the state, capitalists, or corrupt union bosses, mirrors the core of syndicalist theory and practice. The first green van was in protection of Kelly's Bush scrubland in the Sydney suburbs, with the New South Wales BLF workers striking to prevent the encroachment of housing developments into their exploited countryside. The militancy of the green van set it apart from earlier BLF strikes prior to their restructuring, where before the union bosses had always come to the table early and eagerly, the workers now demanded nothing less than the complete shutdown of any further development into the bushland. When the developer attempted to restart the project with scab labor and strike breakers, all BLF union workers across Sydney walked off the job in a citywide strike that threatened to expand into the whole of New South Wales as the BLF represented every unionized construction worker in the country. After this, the BLF conducted 54 more green band strikes in just three years, including a work stoppage of the Gugong Dam in Canberra to ensure protection of the local riverine ecosystem, preventing the Sydney Royal Botanic Garden from being converted into a parking lot for the Sydney Opera House, and multiple strikes to prevent gentrification and ensure the regreening of low-income historic neighborhoods like Sydney, Melbourne, Perth, Wollongong, and others. Another historic Green syndicalist victory was the organizing work of Judy Berry in Northern California to prevent the free cutting of old-growth redwood forests. Judy was a prominent organizer in the Industrial Workers of the World, IWW, in the 1990s, who based much of her ecological organizing on the IWW strategy of radical industrial unionism. To this end, she united the radical ecologists of Earth First with the lumber workers in Northern California to organize not only demonstrations against lumber concerns, but also work stoppages, tree spiking, and other acts of sabotage carried out by radicalized lumber workers in conjunction with Earth First activists. Barry's organizing with the IWW Local 1, together with Earth First, was expressly meant to remedy the lack of class-conscious praxis in ecology, understanding that only through the direct intervention of radical labor can meaningful ecological gains be asserted against the ravaging claws of capital. Barry, like the BLF workers before her, recognized that ecological liberation and the liberation of workers can only be achieved together, and that both are vital to the very survival of complex life on Earth as a whole. Thus, it is clear that syndicalism is not just another footnote in the history of revolutionary action, nor is it confined to some bygone era of Victorian factories and farms, unchanged from the days when Jethro Tull's seed drill first plowed their fields. Rather, syndicalism, specifically green syndicalism, gives a clear window to a world where class-conscious workers embrace their place in and of this planet, which is the only home humanity has ever known. Now is the time for action as more than ever we are seeing not only an acceleration of ecological and climate disasters, but also an ever-increasing stratification of classes. As workers, we must organize here and now to save not only our own lives, but the lives of all of those who will come after us, and the myriad creatures we share this planet with. Together we can bring to birth a new world from the ashes of the old, for the Union makes us strong. This has been a production of Audible Anarchist. You can find more Audible Anarchist on YouTube.